President Cyril Ramaphosa declared a special funeral for human rights lawyer George Bezos. Bezos passed away on Wednesday and will be laid to rest on Thursday. 92-year-old advocate is remembered by family, friends and the rest of the country. To share memories with us is Damon Bezos, George Bezos' son. Damon, good afternoon and thank you for being with us on the program this afternoon. Good afternoon and it's uh, my pleasure to be with you and uh, I'd like to at the outset thank everyone for their wonderful messages of support. Um, uh, we really, the family really appreciates it at this uh, difficult time. Well, firstly, let us uh, convey our sincerest condolences to the Bezos family. I mean, Uncle George, like he was affectionately known by many, is being described as a formidable figure and a hero of the common people. What can you tell us about George Bezos, the family man? So my father, um, despite working extremely long hours, you know, I'm a surgeon, and I think I work long hours, but uh, he worked uh, unbelievably hard. But what he did do, and we really appreciated that, is that he ensured, especially when, when we were young, that Sundays were family days. And they, uh, we spent them with family and friends and really had a wonderful time. The other times that we got together was when he was allowed to go back to Greece and visit his mother and the village that he came from, we would then start going there for uh, summer holidays there and winter holidays here. And it was a time where we could get together as a family and reflect and chat uh, without pressure. Although he did have a small office there where he had to do some work when he was essentially on holiday. Now, even at his, uh, at his age, uh, Uncle George was a very busy man, notably at the Marikana Inquiry where he represented the Human Rights Commission and the families of mine workers who had been killed. What do you think kept him going? You know, we, we always said that uh, the day he doesn't have to go to work uh, would be uh, the day that uh, he would start deteriorating. About three or four years ago, I phoned him on a Saturday to ask him how he's doing, and he said, oh, I'm having a terrible day today. And I said, why is that, Dad? He said, well, I've decided to do nothing today just to see what it's like to be retired. And it's been the worst experience of my life. And so he kept busy, and it was busy with trials, with the Legal Resources Center. He set up Sehiti School and never um, really uh, left. He kept uh, his presence there, whether it be on the board or planting trees. He was a great uh, tree planter, and a lot of the trees, although he won't be able to sit under the shade of them, many others will. And so he kept kept working, and I would say that his stamina was uh, was legend. When he got his teeth into something, he never let go. And uh, whether it be the Marikana uh, inquest or the commission, or whether it be ensuring that the people who were responsible for the deaths of many detainees were finally uh, brought to book, he uh, he kept going at these until the very end. Now, Bezos is also being described as a, an incredibly generous person. What was he up to outside of his legal work? You touched a bit about his work in education, but what was he doing in the community, for instance? Well, a lot of his work was at the school, so at his school where he founded it, and I, I, I'm not sure where he found the time. This school was founded in 1974, and he and his committee had been working hard before that to raise funds. Now, if you think back to 1974, that was the time when he was probably busy, busiest with his political trials and trying to um, protect the people of South Africa from the viciousness of the court system and other systems in South Africa. So he always was generous with his time. He spent time vegetable gardening and would spend an inordinate amount of time with people who wanted to interact with him. He would speak to anyone he would uh, give them advice. Uh, we're getting more and more stories of how he, as a lawyer, would give advice and often go to court for people without asking for any money. So he, he really um, gave generously um, of his time. He was not a materialistic person and uh, would, uh, would really stay in his humble house in Parktown North, do his vegetable gardening. Um, his greatest pleasure was to entertain people at his house 
often in his pajamas. It didn't matter really who who it was. He entertained uh, many famous people um, in his vegetable gardening garden whilst gardening in his uh, pajamas. And he was legend for that. He was a, a humble man and treated everyone with respect, yeah. no matter who it was. And I think it was part of his upbringing in a very poor village in Greece where his mother uh, was a, an illiterate olive farmer. She was illiterate, but certainly not um, uh, stupid. And she uh, managed to raise his uh, siblings uh, through the Second World War and through the Greek Civil War before the siblings came out to Greece, uh, to South Africa. And what do you believe his lasting legacy is? And what can we as South Africans do to honor this legacy? So I would say that he fought injustice wherever he sought. And the injustice was to others. If people um, were, uh, took him on, he, he, took it, he took the punches. But if he saw someone who was vulnerable uh, being abused, he really took it personally. I would say that his most lasting legacy will be the constitution of this land. When people asked him, you know, George, are you a little disappointed in what's happening? You know, things haven't turned out quite as well. The first thing would be is he'd say, I'm an optimist. I was optimistic in 1940, I was optimistic during the heights of apartheid, and I'm optimistic that things will get better. And he believed that the Constitution was a document that would come to the fore. And I think that with the court cases that are slowly grinding away, this is going to happen. And so I would think that his, um, he, his help in developing that Constitution and then applying the law according to that Constitution was something that gave him great pleasure as to opposed to when he had to apply his law in courts where the rules were really against him. How he managed over so many years to, um, to be in court where you know the ref is against you. I don't know if you play soccer, but if you ever play soccer and you know the ref's against you, you really have to ensure that your team is twice as good as the other. And that's what he did in the legal system, is that he made sure that the teams that he worked with were superb, superbly prepared and dealt with the issues at hand. And before I let you go, let's get to the preparations for the funeral. Are there any memorials planned for him or by the family? And what details can you give us uh, on the service that are taking place on Thursday? So essentially, as you know, uh, with uh, COVID, we are restricted to a very small uh, uh, physical uh, funeral. And we'll be having that on Thursday morning. And our plan is to live stream that so that friends and family um, and supporters from around the world can watch uh, the funeral. But in addition to that, what we really are ensuring is that there will be numerous memorial services. The uh, Saheti School and the Greek community will be having one um, next Sunday. Um, the Legal Resources Center is planning one. The Nelson Mandela Foundation will be planning one. Uh, Wits University we are, are in preliminary discussions with. And so I think over the next while, and hopefully culminating um, on his birthday on the uh, 15th of November, we will have multiple memorial services where people who loved, respected, worked with him will have an opportunity to pay formal respects to, to my father. Well, wishing you strength at this uh, period. That was uh, Damon Bezos, the son of the legendary lawyer George Bezos.